the vision and hearing loss, uh, it's like the two of them sort of like magnify each other. It's not like one plus one equals two. It's more like a one plus one equals five sort of thing, I guess, because um, because they having the two together amplifies the issues you deal with. Helen Keller once said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you covered your ears and could never hear again? Say further, you closed your eyes and could never see your loved ones, your mother, your father, your husband, or even your child. No one. Nothing. 85% of communication is achieved through your vision and hearing. My name is Mariko. I have Usher syndrome, which means that I have deafness and retinitis pigmentosa. My deafness, I have no hearing whatsoever. I was born that way. With my retinitis pigmentosa, I have tunnel vision. My name is Sharon. And I went to CNIB in, 19, in the 1980s. And we discussed, you know, what it means to have Usher syndrome. And I was completely in denial. I have RP, I said. Usher syndrome, no, I don't have Usher syndrome. In August of 1950, Stephen was one of the lucky children to be saved by the miracle drug for tubercular meningitis. When I was six and a half, I got tuberculosis, and that's when it all started. My parents heard about a miracle drug, and they thought it would be a cure for TB. He spent almost 18 months in a coma in the Alexandra Hospital in Montreal. I finally came out of the coma around, I think it was in the springtime, and that's when it, they realized I couldn't hear anything at all and I couldn't see very well. So I went to the CNIB, Canadian National Institute for the Blind, and I started working there. And that was 1965 I started there. I was working in their broom shop. And my job was putting labels on brooms. Um, the, the, the rate of pay was very, very low. If you can believe it, it was only $1 an hour. There's a lot of misconceptions. Um, some, people, some people will often look at me and they'll think ushers and they'll be like, what does that mean? And you say blind and they'll automatically think it's total blindness. And I have to explain, no, it's not always. And you think deafness and they think it's a, sort of an international sign language. But it, I mean, even from country to country, they have their own sort of syntax and grammar within their sign language and stuff. I mean, the world is full of misconceptions just because there's a lack of education. And I mean, that's why I really wanted to participate in this interview to help educate. Some people will say, you know, you can't see, so you can't do things. And I can do things myself. I can show them. I can do it. One person said, you know, you can't travel. And I'd say, why? Because you're blind. It doesn't matter. Blind people can travel. I have some vision left, so I can see things. As my vision gets worse, I tend to use intervener services more and more. I mean, there's so many reasons that you can use an intervener for interpreting pur purposes to match up communication. Because um, a regular interpreter may not be trained to work with somebody who has the vision loss, you know, and um, so an intervener can do that. Um, so they add, the intervener adds that aspect of making sure the vis vision is, is compensated for as well. Two or three times a week now I use an intervener and I really enjoy having that intervener to work with me. I feel so much more independent. I get to go out, I can do what I want, I don't have to depend on my husband. 
communicating with someone who is deafblind is very similar to communicating with someone who speaks a foreign language. There's a lack of understanding, some confusion, and some frustration. I conducted my interview with Stephen on a small notepad. By the end of our interview, that barrier was broken, and it would surprise you the things that I learned from him. And I mean, I love going to the movies. Like as a kid, I used to go to movies. It was always a barrier because they didn't have closed caption. And then they set up RWCD. D, but then it, the barrier is is that it's just a little screen and stuff but which was fine I got used to that but now with my vision getting worse I'm not seeing the whole screen so I'm really having to move my head around and then with the small addition for the captioning and stuff I'm looking down to read the caption but then I'm looking up and I'm missing things and then I'm asking my friends and they're letting they're filling me in and stuff but recently I went to the movies and it's just it's it's worse. I mean, I'm only catching half the movie. So, you know, I, I think that that was sort of my last time going to the movies two weeks ago, and it was a bit sad for me. But, you know, that's a big, that's one of the more recent barriers. So I know that I have RP, and I know that my vision will get worse. Do I know how long I have? No, I don't know. So I do it as soon as I can before I, can, before I will regret it. Oh, I just I decided to look for all my old schoolmates. And that's where I found Mary. I started courting her. And around what was that? It was uh, August. August September. Um, this July we will be married for 30 years, but we have no children. You know, that deafblind people can cook, they can clean, they can keep a house. You know, they, they can enjoy socializing with other deaf people. You know, that they can do anything. Deafblind people can do anything. but they need to have an intervener. It makes their life so much easier. I mean, obviously, I guess you would say it sucks, but life goes on. I mean, you learn to deal with it and so on, but it's, um, it's very different from just being deaf or just being blind.